Bless the Lord, who forgiveth all our sins. Hear what our Lord Jesus saith. Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart and with all thy soul and with all thy mind. This is the first and great commandment. And the second is like unto it. Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Let us humbly confess our sins unto Almighty God. Almighty and most merciful Father, we have erred and sinned from our ways like lost sheep. We have followed too much the devices and desires of our own hearts. We have offended against thy holy laws. We have left undone those things which we ought to have done. And we have done those things which we ought not to have done. But thou, O Lord, have mercy upon us. Spare thou those who confess their faults. Restore thou those who are penitent according to thy promises declared unto mankind in Christ Jesus our Lord. And grant, O most merciful Father, for his sake, that we may hereafter live a godly, righteous, and sober life to the glory of thy holy name. Amen. The Almighty and merciful Lord, grant you absolution and remission of all your sins, true repentance, amendment of life, and the grace and the consolation of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Lord, have mercy upon us. Christ, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. The Lord be with you. And with thy spirit. Let us pray. Almighty God, who alone canst order the unruly wills and affections of sinful men. Grant unto thy people that they may love the thing which thou commandest, and desire that which thou dost promise, that so, among the sundry and manifold changes of the world, our hearts may surely there be fixed, where true joys are to be found. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who liveth and reigneth with thee in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated for the readings. A reading from the prophet Jeremiah. The days are surely coming, says the Lord, when I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and the house of Judah. It will not be like the covenant that I made with their ancestors when I took them by the hand to bring them out of the land of Egypt, a covenant that they broke, though I was their husband, says the Lord. But this is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after those days, says the Lord. I will put my law within them, and I will write it on their hearts, and I will be their God, and they shall be my people. No longer shall they teach one another or say to each other, Know the Lord, for they shall all know me, from the least of them to the greatest, says the Lord, for I will forgive their iniquity and remember their sin no more. The word of the Lord. Thank you, Let us say together Psalm 51. Have mercy on me, O God, according to your loving kindness. In your great compassion, blot out my offenses. Wash me through and through from my wickedness, and cleanse me from my sin. For I know my transgressions, and my sin is ever before me. Against you only have I sinned, and done what is evil in your sight. And so you are justified when you speak, and upright in your judgment. Indeed, I have been wicked from my birth, a sinner from my mother's womb. For behold, you look for truth deep within me, and will make me understand wisdom secretly. Purge me from my sin, and I shall be pure. Wash me, and I shall be clean indeed. Make me hear of joy and gladness, that the body you have broken may rejoice. Hide your face from my sins, and blot out all my iniquities. 
Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. Cast me not away from your presence, and take not your Holy Spirit from me. Give me the joy of your saving help again, and sustain me with your bountiful spirit. A reading from the letter to the Ephesians. Christ did not glorify himself in becoming a high priest, but was appointed by the one who said to him, You are my son, today I have begotten you. As he says also in another place, You are a priest forever, according to the order of Melchizedek. In the days of his flesh, Jesus offered up prayers and supplications with loud cries and tears to the one who was able to save him from death and he was heard because of his reverent submission. Although he was a son, he learned obedience through what he suffered, and having been made perfect, he became the source of eternal salvation for all who obey him, having been designated by God a high priest according to the order of Melchizedek. The word of the Lord. Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to John. Now among those who went up to worship at the festival were some Greeks. They came to Philip, who was from Bethsaida in Galilee, and said to him, Sir, we wish to see Jesus. Philip went and told Andrew. Then Andrew and Philip went and told Jesus. Jesus answered them, The hour has come for the Son of Man to be glorified. Very truly, I tell you, unless a grain of wheat falls into the earth and dies, it remains just a single grain. But if it dies, it bears much fruit. Those who love their life lose it, and those who hate their life in this world will keep it for eternal life. Whoever serves me must follow me, and where I am, there will my servant be also. Whoever serves me, the Father will honor. Now my soul is troubled. And what should I say? Father, save me from this hour? No, it is for this reason that I have come to this hour. Father, glorify your name. Then a voice came from heaven. I have glorified it, and I will glorify it again. The crowd standing there heard it and said that it was thunder. Others said, an angel has spoken to him. Jesus answered, this voice has come for your sake, not for mine. Now is the judgment of this world. Now the ruler of this world will be driven out. And I, when I am lifted up from, lifted up from the earth, will draw all people to myself. He said this to indicate the kind of death he was to die. The Gospel of the Lord.
Jesus said, Whosoever will come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Please be seated. On this last Sunday of Lent before Palm Sunday, if you, like me, have a hard time putting our gospel passage in context with the rest of the scriptures, then let me help you. In the Gospel of John, Jesus has most recently been anointed by Mary at Bethany. Remember the story of Mary and Martha, where Martha is begrudgingly busy in the kitchen while Mary sits at the feet of Jesus and anoints Jesus' feet with that expensive perfume? In the Gospel of John, this action is, is seen often as Jesus being anointed for his death. Jesus has also made his triumphal entry into Jerusalem on the donkey, which we will celebrate next Sunday on Palm Sunday, with throngs of onlookers waving palms and shouting, Hosanna. He has offered his last public discourse, his last public teaching, before all manner of things in his life and earthly ministry will be turned upside down. And coming directly after this passage is what we know as the Last Supper, which in the Gospel of John is entirely about washing feet and being in service to one another. So what does our Gospel passage mean to us on this morning? What does it mean to die, as in the seed of grain that must die in order to produce the crop? And what does it mean to see Jesus, as in the Greek's request of wanting to see Jesus? We begin this morning with that request from the Greeks to see Jesus. This is obviously an uncommon request because Philip doesn't know what to do, and so he goes and gets Andrew. And Andrew doesn't know what to do, so they both together go and get Jesus. And almost officially, the last hours of Jesus' life seem to begin their painful countdown with this exchange. Jesus doesn't honor the request or the appeal of the Greeks to see him, but rather he predicts his death. In true Johannine fashion, his prediction is rather cryptic as he says, the hour has come for the Son of Man to be glorified. Even now, knowing what Jesus means by saying this, we may be confused by his words choice. Be glorified in this context, ultimately means he will be arrested, tortured, crucified, will die, rise again, and will ascend into heaven to be with his Father. All of that is difficult to see in this moment from his wording. And yet it is exactly what he means at least in the Gospel of John, where Jesus seems to know exactly what is going to happen to him and when. And this is what he is telling his disciples and ultimately telling us. So how does he prepare his disciples? In fact, how does he prepare each of us for these coming events? He reminds us that like a seed of grain which must die and be offered for rebirth, in order to sprout a new crop, we also must die. We must let go of those words and deeds and thoughts that do not serve the kingdom. We must give ourselves over to the holy entirely. And he even tells us how to do that. More specifically, Jesus says, those who love their life will lose it. What if he's really telling us that what we hang on to in life 
too tightly actually ceases to be ours. Jesus is telling us to let go of how we see our lives so that he might reveal an even grander plan. He is encouraging us to relinquish it to God and let him love our life on our behalf. From that perspective, it might feel a little less intimidating to lose our lives. Maybe it even feels like divine relief. Jesus also says those who hate their life in this world will keep it for eternal life. What if he's really telling us that we don't actually have to hate our lives, we don't hate the breath we take as much as we hate the tyranny of our own selfishness, as we repeatedly make mistakes over and over and over again that separate us from God. When we hate those decisions, more precisely, when we continually and repeatedly give those selfish decisions back to God for him to manage, we are actually saving ourselves and our souls. Again, maybe this feels like divine relief. Jesus ends this short passage with a reminder and a foreshadowing, if you will, that to love him, to follow him, means we must be in service, and specifically in service to one another. Remember, Jesus' demonstration of foot washing is only a page away in John's Gospel. He's preparing them for that. And for a lifetime, they will live without his physical presence. Jesus knows his remaining earthly hours are now quickly fading away. His time to be glorified, as John describes it, is imminent. And he names his human struggle with it all when he says, my soul is troubled. He even suggests that appealing to his father to save him from this hour might be enticing to consider. But he knows the path that is before him, and he willingly chooses it. And he pronounces it with a shout to his father, saying, Father, glorify thy name. To which a voice from heaven booms in return, perhaps only audible and understandable to Jesus. I have glorified it, and I will glorify it again. This voice, these words, are heard as thunder by some and the voice of an angel by others. These words are clearly meant as a moment for the people to all have had the same experience, a sort of point in time when something miraculous occurs. And everyone is going to remember it, even if they don't understand it. So what does this mean to us today? What does it mean to die? Not our physical death, but to die from ourselves and live in God. What does it mean to peacefully stand against violence? versus living into the belief that the only way to rid a system of violence is to violently subdue the other. I mean, Jesus will demonstrate for us very soon what it means to peacefully stand against violence. What does it mean for each of us to die of our selfish, unchristian ways so that we might be spiritually reborn with Christ at the resurrection? And what does it mean to truly see Jesus, not only on resurrection morning, but today in these words of scripture as well? Over these next two weeks, as Christians, we will experience the highs and the lows and the lows and the highs of a liturgical calendar with a series of services that beautifully nourish us. We will be offered salvation, we will be offered grace, 
we will be offered mercy beyond our comprehension. We will have plenty of time to look at what needs to die in each of us in order that to we may be even more wonderfully resurrected with Jesus on Easter morning. I implore you to spend time in thought and prayer about this, to think about what will spring forth on Easter morning in your life, new and fresh. Easter's only 14 days away, and we each have some work to do before then. May the work of our dying to ourselves yield a new and bountiful crop in each of us, that we can't even begin to imagine. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten, not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Ghost of the Virgin Mary and was made man and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried. And the third day he rose again according to the scriptures and ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of the Father and he shall come again with glory to judge both the quick and the dead, whose kingdom shall have no end. And I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Lord and giver of life, who proceedeth from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spake by the prophets. And I believe one holy Catholic and apostolic church I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us pray for the whole state of Christ's church and the world. Almighty and ever-living God, who in thy holy word has taught us to make prayers and supplications and to give thanks for all men. Receive these our prayers which we offer unto thy divine majesty, beseeching thee to inspire continually the universal church with the spirit of truth, unity, and concord. And grant that all those who do confess thy holy name may agree in the truth of thy holy word and live in unity and godly love. Lord, in thy mercy, give grace, O Heavenly Father, to all bishops and other ministers, especially Justin, the Archbishop of Canterbury, Michael, our presiding bishop, Doug, our bishop, and Michelle, our priest, that they may, both by their life and doctrine, set forth thy true and lively word, and rightly and duly administer thy holy sacraments. Lord, in thy mercy, and to all thy people give thy heavenly grace, and especially to this congregation here present, that with meek heart and due reverence they may hear and receive thy holy word, truly serving thee in holiness and righteousness all the days of their life. Lord, in thy mercy. 
We beseech thee also so to rule the hearts of those who bear the authority of government in this and every land, especially Joe, our president, Eric, our governor, and Tom, our mayor, that they may be led to wise decisions and right actions for the welfare and peace of the world. Lord, in thy mercy. Open, O Lord, the eyes of all people to behold thy gracious hand in all thy works, that rejoicing in thy whole creation, they may honor thee with their substance and be faithful stewards of thy bounty. Lord, in thy mercy. We most humbly beseech thee of thy goodness, O Lord, to comfort and succor Sue, Linda, Joe, Winnie, Gordon, Wendy, Susie, Elsie, Gloria, Evie, Erlene, Jerry, Steve, Charlie, Rebecca, Lauren, Helen, Barb, Doris, and Mary Ann. All immigrants and refugees and all those who in this transitory life are in trouble, sorrow, need, sickness, or any other adversity. Lord, in thy mercy. We commend to your gracious care and keeping all the men and women of our armed forces at home and abroad. Defend them day by day with thy heavenly grace and grant them a sense of thy abiding presence wherever they may be. Lord, in thy mercy. Holy Creator, in the midst of this pandemic, we implore thee to guard and protect all of our medical professionals and frontline workers, to safeguard each of us from the virus, and to grant us patience and mental health as we continue to make good decisions to contain this disease. We pray for the disbursement and the efficacy of the vaccinations. Lord, we beseech thee to bring to full recovery all those suffering from COVID and its aftermath. And we remember all those who have succumbed to the pandemic, who now rest in thy loving embrace. Lord, in thy mercy. And we also bless thy holy name for all thy servants departed this life in thy faith and fear, especially John Mullins, beseeching thee to grant them continual growth in thy love and service and to grant us grace so to follow the good examples of the ever-blessed Virgin Mary, St. Paul, and all thy saints, that with them we may be partakers of thy heavenly kingdom. Lord, in thy mercy. Please be seated for a few announcements. Um, first of all, in regards to Barbara Murray, I'm just thrilled to share with you that Gloria and I got to meet with Barbara yesterday. It's the first time that Gloria has seen her mother in over a year. And she got to sit next to her and hold her hand, and there were just tears coming from all of our eyes from that. So we give thanks for the vaccination and for the protocols that are beginning to allow people to safely see their loved ones. 
um, because that's an important part of just being in community and, and being family. Um, I give thanks also for Susie Richter, who, who successfully survived her knee replacement surgery this week. She is home and healing up. Uh, she has a friend staying with her, so we're thankful for that. Uh, we give thanks that Winnie was able to return home, I think, Friday afternoon. And Stephen and Carolyn, Stephen and Carolyn, are staying with her and caring for her until she's able to be on her own. Um, I also wanted to share that we are planning for a spring cleanup this Saturday from 9 to 11. So if you're available and willing to come along and um, do a little work or even just offer some moral support, we would love to see as many of you here on Saturday the 27th from 9 to 11 as possible. Tom is frantically making a list of things to do so that we can get the church spruced up for our Holy Week services. And speaking of Holy Week, I will remind you that during Holy Week, of course, next Sunday, we'll have our Palm Sunday service. On Thursday, we'll have Monday, Thursday at 6 p.m. On Friday, we'll have our regular Good Friday liturgy at noon. And then on Easter morning, we'll have two services, a 7.30 spoken word service and a 9 a.m. regular service. Um, so please make sure you sign up for the services that you plan to attend. Uh, we hope to have those registration links out for you by the end of this week so that you can let us know. And in wonderful, great, exciting news, we can sing again. Yay! Yay! Um, we decided not to start it this week. We wanted to give everybody a week's notice. But beginning on Palm Sunday, we will sing hymns. We will sing the psalm. We will sing the doxology. And thanks to John's good coaching and mentoring, I will attempt to sing the collect of the day in which you will all reply amen in a sung voice as well. And we will do that for Palm Sunday and for Monday, Thursday, just to kind of get our vocal um, pipes warmed up. And then beginning on Easter, we are going to return to a full sung liturgy as we have had in the past. Um, so it might be a little bumpy, but it's going to be gloriously bumpy. Please remember... When you're singing in church, two things have to happen always to keep us safe. Your mask must cover your face. It must cover your nose and your mouth at all times. And when you're singing, you should sing in a voice more like you were trying to sing a baby to sleep, which might be a little hard when we're singing Christ is risen from the dead. But if we want to be able to sing and we want to do that safely, we have to sing quietly, which will still be joyous. And we're hoping that Mana and Susie will continue to lead us with their beautiful voices through the speakers so that we can follow along with them and be able to join them. So I'm looking forward to that. I hope you are as well. Did I miss anything, Jean? I think not. No? Okay. I just like to make sure Jean's awake every Sunday. You know, just got to check on her every Sunday make sure she's over there. I beseech you, brethren, by the mercies of God, to present yourselves as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God, which is your spiritual worship.
All things come of thee, O Lord, and of thine own have we given thee. It is very meet, right, and our bounden duty, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks unto thee, O Lord, Holy Father, almighty everlasting God, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who was in every way tempted as we are, yet did not sin, by whose grace we are able to triumph over every evil, and to live no longer unto ourselves, but unto him who died for us and rose again. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify thy glorious name, evermore praising thee and saying, Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of thy glory. Glory be to thee, O Lord most high. Blessed is he that cometh in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. All glory be to thee, almighty God, our heavenly Father, for that thou of thy tender mercy didst give thine only Son, Jesus Christ, to suffer death upon the cross for our redemption, who made thereby his one oblation of himself once offered a full, perfect, and sufficient sacrifice, oblation, and satisfaction for the sins of the whole world, and did institute and in his holy gospel command us to continue a perpetual memory of that his precious death and sacrifice until his coming again. For in the night in which he was betrayed, he took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Likewise, after supper, he took the cup, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink ye all of this, for this is my blood of the New Testament, which is shed for you and for many for the remission of sins. Do this as oft as ye shall drink it in remembrance of me. Wherefore, O Lord and Heavenly Father, according to the institution of thy dearly beloved Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, we, thy humble servants, do celebrate and make here before thy divine majesty with these thy holy gifts, which we now offer unto thee, the memorial thy Son hath commanded us to make, having in remembrance his blessed passion and precious death, his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension, rendering unto thee most hearty thanks for the innumerable benefits procured unto us by the same. And we most humbly beseech thee, O merciful Father, to hear us, and of thy almighty goodness vouchsafe to bless and sanctify with thy word and Holy Spirit these thy gifts and creatures of bread and wine, that we receiving them according to thy Son, our Savior Jesus Christ's holy institution, in remembrance of his death and passion, may be partakers of his most blessed body and blood. And we earnestly desire thy fatherly goodness mercifully to accept this our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, most humbly beseeching thee to grant that by the merits and death of thy son Jesus Christ, and through faith in his blood, we and all thy whole church may obtain remission of our sins and all other benefits of his passion. And here we offer and present unto thee, O Lord, ourselves, our souls, and bodies, to be a reasonable, holy, and living sacrifice unto thee, humbly beseeching thee that we, and all others who shall be partakers of this holy communion, may worthily receive the most precious body and blood of thy Son, Jesus Christ, and be filled with thy grace and heavenly benediction, and made one body with him, that he may dwell in us, and we in him. And although we are unworthy through our manifold sins to offer unto thee any sacrifice, yet we beseech thee to accept this our bounden duty and service, 
not weighing our merits, but pardoning our offenses. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. By whom and with whom, in the unity of the Holy Ghost, all honor and glory be unto thee, O Father Almighty, world without end. And now, as our Savior Christ hath taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. O Lamb of God, that takest away the sins of the world, have mercy upon us. O Lamb of God, that takest away the sins of the world, have mercy upon us. O Lamb of God, that takest away the sins of the world, grant us thy peace. We do not presume to come into this thy table, O merciful Lord, trusting in our own righteousness, but in thy manifold and great mercies. We are not worthy so much as to gather up the clubs under thy table. Thou art the same Lord, whose property is always in thy mercy. Grant us, therefore, gracious Lord, so to eat the flesh of thy dear Son, Jesus Christ, and to drink his blood, that we may evermore dwell in him, and he in us. Amen. The gift of God, who is immortal, 
communion, O Lord, with thy faithful people at every altar of thy church, for the Holy Eucharist is now being celebrated. We desire to offer to thee praise and thanksgiving. We remember thy death, Lord Christ. We proclaim thy resurrection. We await thy coming in glory. And since some of us cannot receive thee today in the sacrament 